I am Danielle. I am 30 years old and I am an office worker. I married my husband, Fred, three years ago, and as of now, we do not have a child yet. My marriage with my husband is very good, and we are enjoying our life together. We both work, so we are financially stable, and we have many interests in common that we never run out of topics to talk about. We have a similar certain way of thinking about things, and when I am with him, I feel very comfortable being with him. I am sure that I will never meet anyone better than Fred. Fred and I have a perfect married life, but there was one problem that was very bothering me. Well, it is a problem that many families might face, and that is the mother-in-law problem. However, I feel that the problems I face with my mother-in-law are probably the most problematic issues compared to other families. First of all, let me tell you how bad and horrible Nikki, my mother-in-law, is. Regularly, Nikki would just pick on me and talk bad about to me in my face. Uh, Danielle, what are you wearing? Oh, it's one of my favorite skirts. Well, I think it looks out of fashion and a little bit skanky. It's what prostitutes would wear. I mean, like those prostitutes who are unpopular and cannot even get a guy. Not only does she talk bad about me into my face, she always makes me do all of the household chores such as housekeeping. Oh yeah, Danielle, could you clean up my bathtub for me? What? What do you mean, what? You should be thankful that we are letting you stay with us, so you should be repaying your gratitude to us by cleaning up the house instead of being a couch potato. Well, I wasn't saying that because I want to be a couch potato, but... Well then, just clean my bathtub squeaky clean. When you're done cleaning my bathtub, mow the lawn in the backyard, do the grocery shopping for tonight's dinner, and also, don't forget to make the dinner for all of us. That is too much she is asking for me, and that is all of the household chores. Even though Nikki was asking too much out from me, since I just got married then, I decided to put up with her, just because I wanted to build a good relationship with the in-laws. However, the level of Nikki picking on me increased more and more. This is about this one day I visited Nikki and Brad, my father-in-law. I cooked and prepared dinner as Nikki told me to do so. Fred and Brad enjoyed my cooking and even had seconds, but Nikki was mumbling. This dish is so bland, and the texture of this food, it's too chewy. I shouldn't have made Danielle, who is not a good cook, to prepare us the dinner, because she just wasted such great ingredients. After she mumbled those words, she started to throw away my prepared dinner into the trash can. I didn't expect that she would do such a thing, so I was so confused. Nikki, what are you doing? Are you insane? Mom, that is too horrible. Are you too serious? I can't believe this. Why are you both on her side when you two should be on my side? Even though I was very angry and upset because Nikki threw the food away in front of me, but since Brad and Fred scolded her for it, I felt a little better. Brad even told me secretly. To tell you the truth, your cooking is way better than Nikki, so don't take her seriously. She doesn't have any senses in her taste buds. Ever since Brad told me that, after this incident, I never got mad or upset about it. Since then, Fred knew that Nikki would pick on me, and as he cared for me, every time he would visit his parents' place, he stopped taking me with him, which was very nice of him. Thanks to Fred, this allowed me to have a reasonable distance from Nikki, and my stress has been reduced a lot. So only once a year, I would go to the family gathering. But then, it's not a surprise, but 
another incident happened at that family gathering also. At the family gathering, since there were many people, a banquet was held, and Nikki was the main person who was preparing the food at the banquet. I helped with the cooking, but Nikki was the one who was in charge assigning the seats, serving, and placing the food on the table. When I sat down at my seat, which was assigned to me, I had a bad feeling for some reason. So, I checked my food, which was placed in front of me with knife and fork. Then there, I felt like something hard was in my food. When I looked closely, it seems like eggshells were in my food. And not only eggshells, but there were also a few strands of hair in the food. I knew it, and my instincts were right. Only Nikki would do such a thing. So, I secretly replaced the dish which was placed at my seat with Nikki's, which was just a seat across from me. When it was time for everyone to eat, Nikki took a big bite, and we all heard some hard, crunchy noise as she chewed. Ow! She made a scene, and everyone was trying to see what was going on. Someone put eggshells and hairs in my food! Nikki screamed and all of the relatives were looking worried for her. Without any hesitation, Nikki said, Danny yell! It's you who did this! And pointed her fingers towards me. All of the relatives who were there were looking at me coldly. Nikki, you were the one who was cooking and serving! I was in the kitchen only helping around, so how could I even do that? Well, you could sneak out of the kitchen for a second and place the eggshells and hairs in my food. Then, another relative who was helping in the kitchen with me said, Danielle was with me all the time in the kitchen, so it couldn't possibly be her who did it. Also, she came to this table with me, so there were no moments for her to do such thing. And she defended for me. Mom, why are you just suspicious and blaming everything only on Danielle when you didn't even know who did it? What? Well, that's because... Mom, don't tell me you were the one who planned this. Uh, um... For Nikki's sake, I didn't want to say anything, but... As soon as the toast was made and saw my food, I had a bad feeling, so I checked my food and found that there were eggshells and strands of hair in it. Since Nikki was picking on me from the very beginning of our marriage, and since Nikki was the one who cooked and served the plates, I just assumed that Nikki would be the only one who would do such a thing to me. So, I switched our plates. But then, there is no evidence that Nikki actually did this. I shouldn't have just assumed it was Nikki just because she has been picking on me all the time. I'm such a great actress. As I said that, everyone was feeling bad for me and looked at Nikki with dismay. Nikki didn't expect this, so she didn't know what to do, but Brad scolded. Nikki! How could you do such thing? You are just embarrassing. And took her home. Well, if this was the last incident, then I wouldn't have considered my problems to be that big of an issue. However, Nikki didn't learn her lesson. After that, Nikki stopped picking on me, but instead, she started calling me very often. She called me three times a day, morning, lunch, and night, and if I didn't pick up the phone, she would forever call me until I pick up. And if I do answer, she would just talk about her day, wasting my time. Not only calls, but she would just show up at our house without informing me, and just stays at our house for a very long time without doing anything. Even though she doesn't pick on me anymore, she talks to me too much that I can't be bothered to listen to all of her stories, and she always wastes my weekends and holidays by her just talking to me. Even Fred told her off, saying, Mom, could you not come over to our house so often? But she doesn't even listen to him. Therefore, 
As a countermeasure against Nikki wasting my precious time with her talking, I decided to evacuate to my parents' house with Fred every weekend. I thought this would fix everything, but after three weeks of this, Nikki cashed on what Fred and I were doing, so she started coming over to my parents' house now. She even lied that she was the delivery person to catch me off guard, and when my mother opened the door, Nikki would just barge herself in. I can't tell you how horrified we were of Nikki. When this happened, we called Brad and made him preach her and take her back home. After that, Nikki stopped stalking and calling me for a while, but then, one day, Brad passed away very suddenly with a health condition. Since there was no one to stop Nikki, she was a loose cannon. Firstly, Nikki spent all of the money she inherited from Brad in a blink of an eye. She bought tons of high-end brand bags and ate out every day at a very expensive restaurant. As a result, Nikki became very obese. Also, she stopped doing any of the household chores such as cleaning and taking out the trash, so Nikki's house became full of trash and it was all a mess. Even the neighbors complained about it and Fred and I didn't know what to do about it. To make matters worse, Nikki started to borrow money from the loan sharks. Unable to stop her extravagant lifestyle, even when she spent all the money she had from Brad in savings, she continued to use the loan sharks to borrow and spend money. Nikki even brought the debt collectors at our house for us to pay her debts. When the cars of the debt collectors were parked and lined up at our lawn, I was very scared. Fortunately, both Fred and my father were not scared, so they took a firm stand and were able to turn the debt collectors away and then dealt with them legally through our lawyer by saying we were not obligated to make any payments. I couldn't stand Nikki anymore by this time. Even Fred said, Since I don't have any siblings and dad has passed away, mom was my only blood-related family, but this is too much. I have no choice but to cut ties with her. So then, we decided to take a certain action. This year, we had a very long spring break. So, to go to my parents' house, I packed all of my belongings and locked the house and headed for my car. When I was about to open my car, I see Nikki standing there. I knew that she would come over. I already predicted this situation. Nikki would come over to our house at the end of the month for money, and this has been going on for the past three months now. Of course, Fred and I do not give her any money at all. Hey, Danielle! Today is the beginning of the spring break, isn't it? I know you're bored, so I came over to be in your company. You are just saying that, but you just only want money. How could you say such thing, Danielle? Isn't Fred on his business trip right now? I thought you would be lonely, so that's why I came over. Thanks, but no thanks, Nikki. I am about to leave and go over to my parents' place. W well then, I will be looking over your house then. What? You will be gone for a couple days, right? I heard that burglars tend to break in during the holidays. Nikki, it's okay. Please go back to your place. Don't worry, I can take care of your house, you know. As she said this, Nikki just reached into my bag and tried to forcibly take my house keys. Stop it! I quickly hand chopped her wrist. Ow! Nikki was on the ground, holding her wrist. Nikki, stop bothering us anymore, okay? Well then, I have to go now. I ignored Nikki, who was still on the ground, and got in and started the car. I finally go to my parents' place. Fred opened the door. Finally, you are here. I wanted to say here I am with a smile, but when I saw Fred, I became relaxed and I began to cry. Fred hugged me tight. Fred let me cry in his arms until there were no tears left in me anymore. That night, both of my parents, Fred and I, went out to the restaurant and had a very nice dinner. Then, my phone rang. 
It was Nikki who was calling me. I forgot to block her. Since my phone won't stop ringing, I decided to pick up the phone. I had no other choice. This will be my last conversation with her anyways. Hello? H Hello? Is this Danielle? Hey, isn't your parents' house's address this? Uh, the one which is like 50 minutes drive away from your place? Yes, that's the one. Why is your parents' house gone? Oh, that's because my parents moved. What? What do you mean? Where are you now, Danielle? I am at my new parents' house. What? My parents moved. Oh, by the way, Fred and I moved also. What? Nikki, there is no place you can rely on anymore. You have to take care of the rest by yourself. What? Oh no! I tried to speak calmly, but when all the memories of Nikki picking on me were played in my head, my voice became louder. Nikki, in the first place, do you realize what you have done to me? Do you even know how much I suffered because of you? I will never forgive you. Even if you are the mother of my beloved husband, I will despise you for the rest of my life. When I said this, Fred took the phone. Mom, I've had enough. I'm cutting ties with you. Don't you ever get involved with us nor Danielle's parents. What? Nikki was in shock, so we didn't know what she was trying to say. Then, Fred hung up the phone and blocked her number for me. To cut ties completely from Nikki, we changed jobs and moved from the city to the rural area. We already sold our house and we have now moved into our new place. Danielle has no way of finding where we are or where we live. I guess she's going to end up in the worst possible situation being chased by the debt collectors. But that is all her own fault. She brought that to herself. I don't feel sorry for her at all. It's her fault for what she has done and never reflected back on her own actions. On the other hand, we got used to our new life and even had a baby. She is a very cute little girl, Elaine. Since my parents' house and my house is close, I visit my parents with Elaine often. My parents are very happy to see their grandchild and I am very glad we moved here. I am looking forward to watching Elaine grow up with Fred. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe and hit that like button. See you in the next video.